Welcome back my DIY nomads. I hope you're doing really really well today. Sorry I forgot to film the proper intro but today I wanted to show you uh, m me fitting the Thunderbolt system to my van. I bought two kits, one to fit to the sliding door and one to fit to the rear doors. So let's get into it. So here I am just sort of feeding a bit of extra cable I had to use. Uh, in the kit the bit of cable they give you is not long enough and you need to get a bit of like two core cable or two wires all the way around this edge uh, and into the other door because you have to keep the Thunderbolt lock in one side but then use the other end of the cable to get all the way to the other door to hook into the wiring loom. Um, in the kit you get like these brackets, all these rivets, these boot, uh, the ta uh, self tapping screws, uh, everything you need obviously and then this is the Thunderbolt system itself. Um, has a manual lock on the end there. Uh, firstly, I was going to use these self drilling, self tapping screws uh, to attach this Thunderbolt box to where it needs to go. Um, so I started by unscrewing the screws on the front of the box. And then this allowed me to sort of, I was just going to sort of eye up where I roughly wanted it to go. You can put like sort of curves in the cable like this but just try not to make sure try to make sure that the the actual cables where the actual locking wires go through are not properly kinked um, so I attached the brackets to the Thunderbolt box so that it would be able to like mount roughly where I need it to go then I used those self drilling self tapping screws like you saw a second ago uh, I managed to sort of get it exactly where I wanted it to go and this also allowed me to then go ahead and attach the other three uh, self drilling self tapping screws and then it was very securely mounted in place but you've also got to remember to position this in a good position so that a the manual lock can reach to a place on the door you want it to go but then also you can get the actual dead the deadbolt end to where it needs to go but then also not have a kink in the cable um, here I chose this location. There's not a, like an exact location it needs to go, um, but you, you are a little bit limited by choice. Um, but yeah, it's not a like super exact science. Um, so as per the requirements on their website, I used a progressor drill bit. Uh, this is just like a, basically it's a, a triangular drill bit that gets wider and wider and allows you to drill really large holes through metal really easily. But unfortunately, I only had a 12 millimeter one, I think it was to my memory. And uh, I did need the hole to be a bit bigger. Uh, I think they needed like a, like a one, like a, like a 14 or 15 mil one. I, and so I had to use this file. Um, I was just using it there to push a little bit of the foam out of the way. And then it allowed me to start sort of really filing away. And instead of like just going all the way around and making a larger circular hole, I decided just to take this time and make a square hole. Um, and then the actual Thunderbolt deadbolt bit fit in really beautifully and snugly then. Um, at this point, I took the opportunity to firstly disconnect the like the actual bolt part off of the, um, the actual electronic mechanism. So you have to unscrew this portion here. And then also undo these two grub screws that release the cable that's on the inside. And then this allows you to fully slide out the cable. Um, and then I also wanted to just make sure the metal was protected. I didn't mask up. I, could, I should have used masking tape here, but um, I just sprayed a little bit of white spray paint then cleaned up around the edges just so that, that steel wouldn't rust in the future. And then when it was dry, I located the deadbolt. And you can see that I already had some pre-marked points to drill and I had to drill out the holes ready for the rivets that go, that are in the kit that allow you to basically rivet this to the, the, the door of the van. Um, so what you do is you feed that original cable back through, then re-screw it in the end of the dead bolt sort of frame there slide the the actual deadbolt itself back in the, the grub screws were a little bit proud there so I couldn't quite slide it in slide it back on over the, the original cable and then I had done a little bit of measuring so I sort of knew roughly how long 
the end needed to stick out of the uh, the actual casing there when it was in locked mode. Um, and so I screwed down the two grub screws, everything was attached, I slid it into place and uh, from here I could uh, just sort of eye up a bit more, do a little bit more testing and you don't have to do this but I did add a little bit of uh, like an adhesive sealant um, just to sort of add a little bit more so like if any vibration or anything over time sort of makes the rivets come loose or the rivets just become loose over time that sort of adhesive will help keep everything in place. Now I'm not going to lie my riveting skills aren't the best apparently. Now I don't know what I was doing here that made this happen maybe I just I don't like I just sort of couldn't seem to sort of finish off the pins but I put this down to the fact that these rivets came from the US where everything's imperial and the uh, rivet bit that I had was using metric measurements. I just use a little Dremel tool to shave the wasp. But you could also break those off with some pliers as well. Um, and then I'll explain this next step, but they basically give you this like sticky sort of black, blue tack, black tack, and you put it on the end of the deadbolt and you, you lock it from the inside with the doors closed and then you unlock it and you open up the doors and wherever that black blue tack is stuck that's where you now need to drill out the hole for where the deadbolt is going to go in and they give you like this little like metal surround uh, to like make it look sort of neater and more professional so I just lined that back up over the hole got the little drill holes that I needed to and I drilled more holes for the next set of rivets and then from there I sort of connected up the cables so I had a bit of red and black dual core and I had to run it as I showed you earlier all the way around to the other doors to where the actual electronics were. Now I'm going to take a second here just to pause the screen just so I can explain this really clearly. This is the Peugeot Boxer and I don't know if this will also work on the Ducatios and the Relays but if you want this to work with the original wire like the original locking system of your van and you have a Peugeot Boxer you have to connect the green cable of the Thunderbolt box to the orange cable with the green stripe through and then the blue cable of the Thunderbolt to the red cable with the black stripe going through. Um, I didn't use the actual little blue sort of piggyback clips that came in the kit with Thunderbolt. I just used these Wago clips um, but I haven't broken the connection of the original wires of the van here. I've just allowed them the, the Thunderbolt to piggyback off the same electrical current. To save you guys some ag of trying to work out which wire to connect into, it's the green cable of the Thunderbolt box that connects to the orange cable with the green stripe, the blue cable connects to the red cable with the black stripe. Now, I got the rivets again, and I actually, I think with this piece, I actually found, I got my own rivets out because I was getting annoyed that the other rivets weren't working properly, and just riveted them in place. And as you can see this time, the actual ends of the rivets did actually break away, so it was a clean install. And here we go, that's me using the original key fob of my van to lock and unlock my van. So, happy days! So now, I had to move on to the sliding door. And um, yeah, in general, sort of like, as I said, there's not any particular location you have to install these but in the majority of cases I saw it was sort of roughly in this location so I followed the same procedure I used my progressor hole uh, progressor drill bit um, but obviously mine wasn't big enough so I had to file out the hole a bit more I mounted my thunderbolt box and then did the same procedure as before where I removed the deadbolt and the actual casing from the wire fed the wire through the hole that I had just drilled reconnected it all back up and then got it ready to install on the sliding door. Now I actually didn't use the rivets this time round. I think there's a reason why, like I think I might have either lost them or something like that. So I used the, the self drilling tapping screws and here is that black tack I was talking about. So basically you put that on the end, close the door, lock and then unlock the van and you can see there it sticks where it needs to be drilled so that's basically where that black tack goes is exactly where the hole needs to be for where the deadbolt goes through which is actually it's quite a clever little way of doing it really <laughs> whoop, whoop. 
Yeah, boy. So this is the one thing I must admit I did experience was a problem from the last time is when someone tries to open it when the lock is on, the friction on the bolt is quite high. That works. But yet again, here was me trying to use the original rivets in the kit and I had a hit, bit of a hit and miss there. One of them did work, one of them didn't. Right everyone, so the system's in. It's just, it is actually sort of quite simple. Um, it's very simple, should I say. Um, obviously I had it mounted on the inside here. This works really well with the boxes um, and the Ducatos and the relays. Um, I'm not sure about other models, although I did fit it on a Sprinter that was a little bit of a faff. Um, I still need to choose a place for the actual manual lock bit to go. Um, I might not even have it, but it might be worth, it might be worth having it to be honest. Um, I mounted it back here because then all of these where all of these lines where the actual stiffer cable is running through there's not like very severe kinks which are going to add friction to the line but I have given this a bit of excess here because if I ever need to take it out that end and I've got this line is just taut then I can I won't be able to pull it out without taking off this panel taking off the panel that covers all this up then loosening these so by having a bit of slack in this line means that I can do maintenance from the outside without having to take anything off. Then the cables themselves, they extend with, uh, they just literally come with some, ex some extension cables, uh, green and blue, and I've taken them all the way up there. And I will tidy this up and it goes all the way. But what we've got is the green wire uses one of these clips to run onto the black and purple cable. And then the blue wire that comes off the Thunderbolt goes on to the yellow wire with a pink stripe. So the green wire from the Thunderbolt clips onto the black and purple, the blue wire clips onto the yellow and pink. And that means that you can straight away just use the sun Thunderbolt system with your original keys. So let's lock the van and let's unlock the van. Boom. Right, I'd like to give my sort of like quick review of what I think of the system. I personally really like the Thunderbolt system. Um, they're not cheap, but they're not crazy expensive either. It's about 260 US dollars each lock. Um, then by the time I shipped it from the US to the UK, it was about 84 pounds for import fees. Um, but for me, it's that peace of mind. Um, I really like that peace of mind. And for anyone that's sort of, I love the the fact that it runs off my key fobs, the original key fob, but if you don't like the idea of that, and I saw a comment from someone, I think it was David Piper, I think it was, um, he said, if your original uh, like electric lock system fails, then you are buggered because obviously it's powered off of that. And that's a very good point. Um, they do do kits that come with their own key fobs. So you could have it powered off your leisure battery or starter battery, and then that in itself might eliminate that issue because then they're still powered but they're running separately which in a way um but it's just the fact that it runs off a key fob as well which is really cool um but yeah i really like them not too crazy to install not super easy like you do need a few little odd tools and bits and bobs but yeah yeah again as you've seen not crazy hard to install either um i think you know the whole rear door one where you have to lead the cable all the way out to the other side maybe it would be beneficial in that situation to have the ones on the separate key fob because you wouldn't have to run that cable all the way to the other door you just have to get power to it and that's much much easier to do in that situation um but yeah so not you know five out of five stars but good four four and a half in my opinion um so i'll let you guys make up your own decisions about whether you'd like to get one but anyway, other than that, that's me tuning out. Please let me know your thoughts below. Um, I'd love to sort of know if you guys have fitted a Thunderbolt system yourself or you've fitted something else that you just want to, other people to know about that's really good like locking system or added security. And other than that, I'll catch you DIY nomads next time.